The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the May 7th. The fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, give us a call, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. You can always send me an email, send it to Steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in in our Tigers Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, if you're tuning in, it's 8.08 in the morning. We are recording the show. We'll try to make it as pertinent as we can to the normal 1 o'clock slot. But right now, we've got equity futures, U.S. equity futures, that is, trading to the downside. Dow's off 90 points. S&P's off uh, 14. NASDAQ 100 down 60. The Russell's off three. Over in Asia last night, a bit of a mixed bag. It was the Nikkei that was up 185 points. Shanghai and the Hang Seng were off. The uh, Hang Seng down 791 points, nearly 4%. Over in Australia, they closed down 2%. The uh, Australian S&P 200, that is. The DAX is down 170 points. That's one and two tenths percent. And the FTSE is off 1% or 73 points. Goldilocks up seven bucks. Silver's off three pennies. Platinum down 24 bucks. Palladium off 44 bucks. That's two and a half and two percent respectively. 30-year Treasury basically flat. It's down four ticks at 137.05. What's all that mean? Where is everything trading? Let's just simply go to this little quick market update chart. Now we'll go di dive down in detail as to what's going on. But here's kind of a nine panel chart just to give us an overview of what uh, many of the markets are doing. The top portion is dealing with the equity markets. You've got the ES Mini in the upper left hand side. The ES Mini is trading below the bottom of its daily, bottom of its weekly profile. Last level of support would be that 4092.75 level. That's a TD9 count bottom for the ES Mini. That was a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So 4092.75 is a key level. If you see it close below that, that's going to suggest lower price. Now, spot volatility is the next chart. Well above its 50-day expense moving average, which was at 26.12. Yesterday, one-day rate of change was well above plus 10%. And we still haven't seen that rally that we typically see when we get a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. So that still is in the offing. And we're going to go take a look at the short-term time frame charts to see if we can figure that out. The NQ is testing support. The NQ actually has a buy the D point, an A to B equals C D pattern. I have it drawn in here just simply because it would just clutter the chart. And as long as price holds, that means closes above 12, 8, 150, that pattern will remain in play out here. Now, price is below the bottom of its daily profile. Not a good thing. But what the, the key level here for the daily time frame is going to be that 12, 8, 150 area. Move down to the next panel. The next panel, you've got the U.S. dollar index on the left-hand side. That shows a TD9 count top that is in play. Price is consolidating with inside its daily profile. The TD9 count top would fail and suggest a strong moment to move to the upside if there was a close above 103.95. Otherwise, what you have right now is just a bit of a consolidation. In the case of Goldilocks, down below the bottom of its daily set of profiles, but testing and holding so far at the weekly profile. And its key level today from a closing standpoint is going to be 
1870, uh, make sure, 1873.30. If there's a close below that, that says there's an A to B equals CD to the downside, and that's where gold would then target. In the case of silver, silver has a TD9 count bottom. Um, it has, wait a minute, let me just take a look here. Yeah, it does. It's got a TD9 count bottom, which occurred at TD9 count breakout support, which was at 2220. You also have a new profile. So there's a bunch of support 2220 for silver, 2332. Price is trading right now at uh, 2244. So a bunch of supporting for silver. Silver should really be able to target the 2313-ish level. That's its oscillator and change line. It's not shown right here, but that is where price should target. Go down to the bottom panel now. And again, just a quick overview of what the uh, markets are communicating to us, these, these instruments out here. And uh, newsletter subscribers receive this each day. White Sweet Crude is taking on resistance. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. And that's at 110.22. We're at 110.29 right now. A close today above 110.22 would be another bullish sign out there and suggest higher price, probably back to the 120 level. Natural gas, which has been on a tear, should continue to tear to the upside, but maybe only for another day or so, or maybe not at all. Today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, not shown here is a road's momentum indicator signal. If we were to get a bearish reversal candidate, today, then that would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top. But there's a possibility that we get a TD9 count top that forms between today and Tuesday of next week. So just be careful. Just a short-term top. Uh, and it may, it may fail, quite frankly. It may not form. We'll see. But well, it's likely going to form. And then let's go to the 30-year Treasury out here. 30-year Treasury, I now have the, so all these charts are their daily time frame, with the exception of the 30-year Treasury. And that's because price is trading below all levels of support out here, and that suggests an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, on this pattern here, and I'll just simply expand this chart out. Well, I guess we're going to have to draw that A to B equals CD pattern in here again, so no problem. So let me get that going. And the reason I want to expand this out and show this to you is that that first A to B equals CD price projection is not likely the final target for the 30-year Treasury. So the one-to-one -one level would get us down to 131.22. So there's two reasons to suggest that a price is going to make more than a one-to-one -one move to the downside. The first reason is the B to C leg retracement. You'll see on my screen here it reads 45.13. That was the retracement level. So a little bit more than a 0 0.382, less than 50%, less than a 0 0.618 retracement, says it's got a lot of power ginned up and should do more than the one-to-one. -one. The second thing is the A to B leg, we have that drawn in here. We're using that exact same angle for the C to D leg. And notice how price is on the strong side. The strong side would be the left side. Tells you it's moving down faster than it did on that A to B leg. So that's another indication that, and then I'm not talking about, in, this is a weekly chart we're looking at. So I'm not talking about intraday moves, daily moves out here. Just giving you the bigger picture right now. And that bigger picture is certainly 131.22, but more likely a move down to 121.71. And all this selling that we see here in the 30-year treasury, yes, some because of uh, certainly uh, the Fed raising interest rates out here. But uh, a lot of it could just simply be China uh, trying to really reduce its exposure to the uh, U.S. out there. So that's the summary of what's going on inside these markets. We get back from this uh, breakout here. I'll see if there's any questions that have come in by email or inside the Tiger's Den. If there are, we'll get to those. Otherwise, we'll just start uh, uh, got, uh, picking away at the uh, charts one by one and certainly taking a look at the possibility of a uh, bouncer bottom and uh, what the parameters would be. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our first question. It's actually the only question that's coming uh, so far, and this is from Hector and Patty. And uh, Hector writes in, happy, fabulous, Frost, Fro frosty Foster's Friday. Back at you. A little bit too early for a brewski, uh, but uh, uh, not, not going to be too early come um, 4.30, 5 o'clock, let's say. It is Friday after all, right? And uh, Stevie didn't do any uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration out there. That's a pity. But Hector writes in. You guys didn't really care about that. Hector writes in. He says the uh, XL and XLF weeklies, OUL resistance uh, support uh, levels, please. Uh, we'll be listening while driving north. Perfect. Uh, up Highway 101, Southern California. That sounds great. Uh, that is a, a beautiful drive. I tell you, the, the drive I like. So it's, it's well, the, the drive I like is coming down from uh, San Francisco to uh, Pebble Beach down uh, Pacific Coast Highway there. That that is a uh, that's about as great of a drive. And then it's, it's better to go actually beyond Pebble Beach. Um, but just a just a beautiful drive. So, OK, we'll keep your eyes on the road. But with regard to the XLE, you asked, first of all, the weekly. So the weekly asset and change line is at 78.73. Let's just do an overview of the energy sector out here. So from a monthly standpoint, we are in bar number eight. We know that TD nine count tops can form a bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So how do we know whether the monthly is going to form that bar or not? Well, we look to the weekly and the daily for additional information. The weekly shows that it has a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. That pattern would get negated if there is a close above the high from the week of April what was that, April uh, 22nd? And that high, Hector and Patty, is 81.51. He closed above 81.51 and negates that pattern and says that we had higher. Now, price is above that green oscillator and change line. So even though it has a topping signal, its message to you and I is really neutral at this stage. And that's the same thing for the daily time frame for the energy sector. The energy sector yesterday generated a bearish uh, dark cloud cover candle. 
And it did that with a road momentum indicator signal that was triggered. So that's a suggestion that price wants to head lower. However, fortunate for you and I, we have a couple of levels of support and resistance for us to track to understand whether or not the key levels have been broken. In the case of the XLE, the answer is no. The key level was tested. I'm not saying that it can't be broken. I'm saying it has not been broken. And not until it's broken will we get any kind of a message that says that uh, this is there's traction here with regard to yesterday's confirmed road momentum indicator top. And that means and that requires a close below its oscillator and change line that is currently printing on a daily time frame at 79.09. Even if price closes below that, it's still not going to really generate a bearish directional signal message until price can close below the top of its daily profile, 77.31. So. We may see some type of pullback. I know in the in the uh, uh, pre-market prices trading higher than where it closed yesterday. I think we're around 81.44. We closed at 80.52 out there. So what I'd be watching for on any move lower, Hector and Patty, would be first 79.09 and then finally 77.31. You get into the 77.31 level, then that road's momentum indicator signal is taking hold and would suggest a test of support down to 72.05. You could even get to 67.26. I am not saying that's where it's headed to now. Just something that we have to be careful about. Be careful because of the monthly potential TD9 count top that's out there. But it does, that I don't think that really is a big factor at the moment. It's the weekly. Uh, that's got that road's momentum indicator top. So the weekly and the daily are really all that we need to focus in on. I don't see anything else out here to assist us, so we will just simply move on. The move on is to the XLF. Remember that Hector and Patty asked about the XLE and the XLF, so we're going to let these. I sure hope I have those charts up. I did not. Son of a gun. How did Stevie do that? Hmm. Okay, well, that's really great out there. So uh, my apology to everybody who was listening because I was talking one thing and showing a different set of charts. At least they did, had the XLE charts up there. But what we'll do is we'll switch over to the XLF and then I'll, I'll get those XLE charts back up on our screen uh, just so that you can kind of uh, put two and two together. So here's the XLF set of charts out there. Uh, first, Hector and Patty asked about the oscillator and change line. For the XLF, it's 37.63. Now, the XLF nowhere near as bullish as the XLE, the energy sector. In the case, on a monthly basis, you have a confirmed road momentum indicator top with a consolidation with inside its profile. Key level of support here for the XLF on a monthly basis, 33.36. Close below that would suggest a target of 22.49. Now, before price would get down to 22.49, it would have to deal with 30.99. 30.99 is a TD9 count breakout level for the weekly time frame. The weekly has a confirmed road momentum indicator top. And with price below the bottom of its weekly profile, that is suggesting it wants to target the 30.99 level. If we take a look at the uh, daily time frame, though, the daily time Time frame generated a buy the D point pattern. I don't have an A to B equals CD drawn in here, but you can visually see it. There's several A to B equals CD patterns, and it was the uh, bull separation candle that formed on May the third that uh, created that buy the D point. I even see a three drive to a bottom pattern out here on a daily basis. So the key uh, level of support now is going to be the low of the week. And the low of the week was 33.84. If price closes below that, then these bottom patterns that we're taking a look at will have failed. The XLF, let me just see, where is this trading here in the pre-market? XLF closed at uh, 35.34. Ooh, it's uh, uh, or 34.99, uh, 34.99. And it's trading right now at 34.93. So just down a few pennies, not that big of a deal out there. But uh, let me go back and take one look at something here. XLF. Just want to make sure about the bottom of its daily profile. Yeah, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile out there, which is at 35.44. So that's a level that, if this is bullish from the daily standpoint, Hector and Patty, you really want to see a close above that 35.34 level. That would then suggest to move to 36.72. So uh, the XLF uh, has the confusing signals out here. Consolidation on the monthly after a top. The weekly is saying I want lower price. The daily says I'm going to struggle to make higher price. So for the weekly to win out, you just need to see a close below this week's low out there. That would be your signal that price set into the 3099 area. So hope that helps you out. Um, let me uh, do this here. Let me just uh, get these charts fired back up for the XLE. And that way, uh, at least the dialogue that I had with myself, apparently, um, 
uh, you'll be able to at least see the charts for the energy sector and uh, what we were taking a look at. So uh, here they're getting populated. You're going to see the eight bar where bar number eight doesn't show bar number eight out there. And uh, um, so on the monthly basis, you can see the roads momentum indicator top. You can see the dark color. Here's the daily time frame chart out here. I'll just simply expand this out. You can see that nice roads momentum indicator top and signal. But price testing and holding that green oscillator and change line. So an oscillator and change line out there is just simply identifying the difference between the 39 and 19 period. Um, exponential moving average out here and uh, and that creates a price oscillator and when that price oscillator is above zero my line is green when it's below zero the line is red when price is above a green line it tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero that is a bullish condition for a market until proven otherwise and that's really why we suggested that for the daily time frame that its signal is neutral as we speak so hope that helps you out hector and patty uh, safe driving and enjoy that trip when we get back for this break we're going to go take a look at that ticker symbol, L-A-N-D. That's for Craig E. And he says, or asks, what do the charts say about the longer term position? We're going to go find out. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, it is 8.30. The morning jobs report is out. So we're taking a look at the uh, uh, reaction, at least the initial reaction inside the uh, futures markets out here. Uh, so if you're listening live at uh, 1.30, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, we'll be back to regular programming hours on uh, Monday. In the meantime, if you're listening live, we'd love to hear from you. And you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. You can always email me. Do it quick, though. Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. So right now we're seeing the reaction here. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, we've seen the equity futures go from negative to positive right now. You've got the Dow futures up 41, 30, 30 points or so, but it's going to be bouncing around a bit here. Our gold's up 12 bucks now. Silver up 13 pennies. Light sweet crude is up a buck 40, trading out at 109.65. And the 30 uh, year treasury up uh, 15 ticks, trading out at uh, 118.03. So we'll come back to these. Um, you know, let, let, this, uh, let this trade here for a bit, and then we'll come back and take a look at that. So in the meantime, let's go answer Craig E's question about uh, what is the long term position in LAND look like? So by long term, I'm going to assume. Uh, that uh, what Craig is referring to is the monthly time frame. And what the monthly time frame did last month was it generated a bearish shooting star candle. Now, that itself, Craig, is not a big deal. It's only a big deal if you get a bearish or bullish reversal candle at the completion of a pattern. Well, in this instance here, with regard to land, that was a um, 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD. So from the long-term standpoint, it says time out. That's what the monthly chart shows us. The weekly chart, it doesn't show on this screen, but you'll see it momentarily. As, as the monthly was making its high and the weekly was doing the same thing, that was from the week of two weeks ago. The week That began April 18th. That was bar number nine of a TD9 count. It also was a uh, bearish shooting star candle. And uh, so you have one on the monthly, you had one on the weekly, and that confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top and also an A to B equals CD patterns. Now, do having multiple topping patterns make it more topping? No, not really. But here's what we do know. You've got topping patterns out there, and the weekly chart is suggesting that price will pull back to support, which is 33.23. Now, I don't know whether that level will hold or not, but uh, so we've gone from the longer term. The monthly says, okay, time out. But by the way, its support level is 31.55. You'll see that when I turn on the uh, eight panel charts out there. That's its oscillator and change line. And then you've got support at the uh, 3323 level, which was the bottom of the weekly profile. Now, the daily time frame shows us what? Well, the daily time frame actually has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, but this is the bar you're going to be paying attention to, Craig. It is the bar from May 2nd, and the low there is 3511. The reason that you're focused on that is that was a TD9 count. That was the low of the TD9 count pattern that did complete. And if you do see a close below 3511, not only will it set up an A to B equals CD downside on the daily time frame, we'll tell you about a strong momentum move with price likely targeting 3141. So now I'll just simply switch over to those white background screens out here so we can take just a quick peek at it. And there you go. So you can see the uh, bearish shooting star on the monthly time frame, the TD9 count on the weekly chart out here. You've got a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the uh, daily time frame chart. Here's your bar number eight. There's your 3141 uh, price target out there. So um, right now, the key with regard to downside action. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. We might have a second sneeze out there. All right. <clears throat> I wonder what that means. And uh, so uh, 3511 is going to be your key number. If you see a close below that, then what you're seeing from the weekly and the monthly time frame charts, Craig, are going to uh, just be confirmed that uh, there's still lower prices to come. Okay, perfect. So we're through all that. There was a question inside the Tiger's Den to look at the U.S. dollar. So let's go take a look at the U.S. dollar index. And then we'll go take a look at what's going on inside the equity future contracts out there. We'll look at the intraday charts so on and so forth. So with regard to the dollar, let me see what screen I'm on. So I got to get over to the black background screens first. <laughs> Give me a moment here. We'll get that powered up. And now we just need to go find where's Stevie's dollar chart out here. The dollar chart is right here. So what the U.S. dollar did was it created a TD9 count top. And I don't recall who asked for this. Um, when it created a TD9 count top, it does that on April the 28th. 
And so that resistance level is 103.95. There's a new profile that formed yesterday. Not surprising, 103.95 is its resistance level. If the U.S. dollar index were to close above that, then that tells about a strong moment to move to the upside. Otherwise, right now, we have a consolidation with inside its daily profile, which is between 102.79 and 103.95. We can see 100% move of a move on a weekly basis with price getting back to the swing points from back in March of 2020. So a reason to say, okay, a pause would make sense here. But there's an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside in both the uh, monthly and the quarterly time frame. And so over time, 109.58, uh, 109.47, I'm not sure why I've got different prices out there, but I do. But in that range is where the U.S. dollar index is likely headed. We'll know that it's headed in that area if we see a close above 103.95. If you see two consecutive closes below 102.79, then that's going to tell us about a pullback, a further retracement out there. That's not what we have as we speak. So that is your U.S. dollar index. Now, let's go see what's going on in the markets out here. Let's go take a look at what do we want to take a look at? Let's do this. Oh, well, just hold on a second here. Maybe before we do that, we've got, uh, oh, we've got Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for waking up so early and joining mm -hmm. us, and uh, thank you for holding. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. Good morning to you. Thank you. And uh, how can I help you on this uh, early Friday a.m.? It sounds like you're just about to delve into it. That was just to take a look at the uh, different equity feature contracts. I mean, here we are Friday. One of my favorite days to trade. We've had all, lots of volatility in the market, so I think there's potential today to do some serious day trading. I just wanted to get your thoughts on where we're at, where we could potentially go throughout the day. So, what, 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 which way are you leaning? And then I can. Uh... I'm looking to look for a bounce. I and mean, considering what we had with the VIX yesterday, and there's probably going to be a lot of back and forth motion, but I just, that's you know generally what I'm looking to, to be more bullish. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So uh, here, what we're going to do is we're going to put on the 30-minute uh, time frame chart for each of the equity future contracts. And so first, uh, folks, uh, Brent was mentioning uh, the spot volatility index yesterday, which had a one-day rate of change above plus 10 percent. I think it might have been 23 percent or so. It doesn't matter whether it's 10.01 or it's 50. You have a one-day rate of change above plus 10 percent. You typically see a bouncer bottom that forms inside the uh, futures market at least overnight. Well, as we came into the close yesterday yesterday, uh, each of the equity future contracts form roads momentum indicator signals, nice big old bullish engulfing candles for all four of the equity future contract. What has not transpired just yet, Brent, is levels of resistance that have been taken out. What transpired after that uh, confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom has been a sideways move in between profiles. So on the 30-minute basis, Brent, if price is able to close above the top of its current profile, which is priced at 41.55, that would then lean towards the idea that price should continue to move higher. In the case of the NQ, the number to be watching is 12.939. In the case of the Dow, the number to be watching is 33.051. And in the case of Russell 2000, the top of its profile is currently under attack as we speak. The others are not under attack just yet. And the level for the Russell 2000 is 1874.20. We're trading at 1874.70 as we speak right now. So those are the levels. Hey, Brent, do me a favor. We're going to a break here. Hold on. We'll come back. And I want to answer all your questions about the equity future contracts. Steve Rhodes with Brent and Martinez, California. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Just Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. So, Brent, any questions about uh, what we took a look at uh, just before we went to that break, the 30-minute charts, the profile levels? Um, and I gave you the profile levels to the top. Uh, we also need to be concerned about profile levels to the bottom. But so far, any questions so far? Yeah, and I know you gave some of those at the very beginning of the show for a couple of them. So I appreciate that. And uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so really, even though you know, I did say we we should be concerned about the profile levels to the uh, bottom. It's really going to be yesterday's low that we want to focus in on because that was the bullish reversal candle of the Rosemont indicator signal. So that really is a support level. So in the case of the ES Mini, folks, if price were to close below forty ninety nine twenty five, that tells us to expect and anticipate lower price inside the NQ. The level that needs to be closed below is twelve seven oh five twenty five. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract. The area that you're looking at is 32,589. And inside the Russell 2000, the downside, the level that you're looking at would be 1844.10. The reason to give you those figures, folks, is if price pulls back to those areas, that could be a buying area, could be a buying area, because price would be back at support. It would be an easy trade out there. But resistance still has to fail. And those are the, currently the tops of those profiles. Now, Brent. This is courtesy of uh, John or Z inside the Tiger's Den, and I'll pass this on to you. And that's with regard to the NQ. So in the case of the NQ, if it were to close above 12, 930, 12 940, that's the top of its profile, then the question is, where would price likely run to? And voila, I believe we have your answer, or what could be your answer. And that is, I'm going to put up a, a different chart here. It's going to be the two-hour time frame chart for the NQ. And John had posted this in the den, so I went ahead and created that chart. And that chart shows us that the 200 period exponential moving average has acted as resistance every time that it's been tested since April the 6th. Today is May the 6th. So that's pretty powerful. And so right now, that level print is printing at 13,460. Of course, that's going to go up and down as price moves up and down. But if we were to get a rally, that would be a key level to be observing. And if price were to take that out, it would be really important. But that's likely where price would head to. So I want to say thanks to John for sharing that information. I'm not saying that's where price is headed to. I'm saying that if price does clear resistance, and in the NQ, the resistance level was the 30-minute time frame we were looking at, folks. And that was at 12, 940. Here, as we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, Brent, the key level that price would have to clear is 13.04075. That's the top of the profile for its 120-minute time frame. How does that 
uh, sound. That's all great stuff, and thank uh, John for me, which you, yeah. I guess you already have. But um, could you kind of open things up a bit more and just look at some of the different shorter term time frames? Just to, I mean, do you have any kind of accounts, anything that's indicating some kind of a bottom here, or where are things at? Okay, so let's go to uh, the answer to your question is can we look at some shorter term time frame charts? And the answer is yes. Uh, Stevie just has to get to it. So give us a moment here. We're going to move over. And it's the NQs that I actually have up on the screen right now. So we'll just stick with those. So the shortest time frame chart that I have is a five minute chart out here. And that five minute chart isn't really providing us with a ton of information as I take a look at it. Uh, on a pullback or retracement, 12809 is what it says should be support. For the 10 minute chart, I don't have any kind of a signal out here to assist us as 12794 should be support. The 15 minute chart shows that the uh, bounce that took place after the jobs number was released, ran right up to resistance, which was its TD nine count breakdown level. So this is an important chart to be paying attention to because 12889.50 is a real key level of support on that time frame chart, Brett. So that's a 15 minute chart. I'd note that on your pad of paper. As we uh, reduce this, take a look at the 30 minute chart, nothing new there. 60 minute chart as a erosion to indicator bottom pattern that did form. So, and we have that already on the 30 minute chart. So that has not been taken out. And the 60 minute chart is uh, just formed one. And it, it's actually been formed because there was a bullish hammer candle that took place uh, when the uh, market closed, when the market, when the bar closed at 8 a.m. this morning. So this is giving us a suggestion that it too wants to bottom. The 60 minute resistance level, Brent, is 12,870. If price closes above that, that's gonna be a signal of a move higher out there. The 120 minute chart, I don't have a bottom signal, but we can also see that uh, right now, so in order for price to get up to that 13, 459 is 60 area out there, what we'd be looking for on the 120 minute chart, so this is helpful to us, is price must close above that red oscillator and change line. So the first pit, first pit stop on any type of rally is gonna be that red oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 12,880. If that unfolds, then you get that move to possibly 13,040 and then above that, the 13,460 level. So that's what I see on the NQ charts out here. Nothing on the five hour time frame chart other than price retesting a level of support, which was created by a roads momentum indicator signal at, at uh, uh, looks like uh, 5, 5, 5 p.m. going in on May the 2nd. Brent, any questions about these charts or any of the data that we've shared so far? No, that was great, Steve. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, that's okay. what I was hoping to have you take a look at. And you which which of the job, equity? So thank you. Yeah, which of the equity futures charts are you thinking of trading? Is there you're leaning towards one or the other? I'm honestly probably going to be doing something in individual equities, but I of course have to be looking at the, the different uh, equity markets to give me a, the kind of the cue uh, as to as if I want to go into one of those equities. And it would probably, of course, if it's something a Nasdaq stock, that's what I'm going to be looking at. If it's something, you know, just there's some that are in, you know multiple you know in the s p and the nasdaq it just depends on which sure. one you're looking at but uh, that's going to be my cue is yeah that the equity features okay perfect perfect brent is there anything else i can do for you that's it steve thank you so much have yourself a great day a great weekend and i heard you talking about that coastal drive i go down to big sur is very you know pretty i like up the uh, other direction mendocino that area up there sonoma coast is pretty awesome as well so just have yourself a great weekend and, and well, uh, again thanks so much for your help you bet and thanks so much for joining us so early that was brent in martinez california 5 48 in the morning out there you gotta love it certainly i do let's go to our next question out here this one coming in from the tiger's den and uh this is a take look at a ticker symbol called bg so let me see which charts i'm on i'm on those charts here so we're gonna let that populate and then we will go figure out what bg is doing bg is um bunge limited bungee limited and uh, so as these charts here are popular, let me explain that right now, yesterday was a close below the bottom of its daily profile. So it's uh, broken through a, a key level of support, and that is 116.59. A second consecutive close below that's going to suggest lower price. You might say lower price to where? That lower price would then be the center of its weekly profile, which is 110.59. And if price were to close below that, then we're looking at a move to between 102.96 to 105.50. Back to, let's go over to the monthly chart. So on the monthly chart, it looks like there's an A to B equals C to the upside that may have completed. 
I'm going to do that pattern, draw that pattern in on my black background charts just to confirm that. Nah, hasn't made it exactly. The A to B equals CD target should get us to the 135.11. The reason that I wanted to look at that, folks, was because of last month's bearish shooting star candle. But the A to B, it just has not completed that pattern. Completing that pattern will take us back to its highs from back in 2008. So that's where it's targeting. And that's in the 135 area. Uh, 135.11 is the exact A to B equals CD. So it does look like uh, BG wants to target that longer term. Let's go take a look at the weekly chart. A confirmed TD9 count top, Rhodes momentum indicator top, and price below that oscillator and change line. So price really may go target that 102.96 to 110.59 level. And you can see 110.58 is its daily TD9 count breakout support. BG is likely headed there, 110.58. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors if you want to take advantage of this sector now is the time to subscribe to my gold report the gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold which is the currency and bond markets new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose every monday morning i publish the gold report with coverage of gold silver bonds the xau hui gdx as well as more than 30 different mining equities to see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we've got the uh, uh, so. Uh, by the way, if you are listening in, thanks so much for doing so. Uh, we're recording this show. It's eight fifty four in the uh, morning. We'll be back to normal programming on Monday. Uh, right now, you've had the job numbers come out. We've seen some fluctuation inside the uh, well, really inside all the futures out here, whether it's metals or whether it's the equity futures. Currently, the Dow equity futures are down one forty. S and P is off twenty three. Nasdaq is down one oh six. Russell's off seven. Gold is up two bucks. Silver's off three pennies. Lightspeed crude is trading out at uh, 109.33. That's up a buck seven. A 30-year Treasury down 18 ticks. 136.25 uh, is its print. So, what to expect and anticipate during the day? Look, we had a one-day rate of change and spot volatility index above. Uh, 
uh, plus 10 percent. What that typically results in, and it still is a possibility today because we have not taken out key levels of resistance, what that generates is a uh, uh, these blue little bars out there. And we typically see a bouncer bottom. So that's still what we're going to anticipate. We anticipate that unless we take out uh, yesterday's lows. And then and then, then uh, clearly that uh, would say that the that bounce has been delayed. If we take a look at the ES mini, we went through in detail the uh, shorter term time frame charts with Brent for the NQ. If we take a look at the ES mini out here, the 15 minute chart shows the same thing, which is that on that uh, spike higher where price found resistance was 41, 49.50. That was its TD9 count breakdown level. That's the first area to the upside that you're going to be paying attention to. To the downside, it's really going to be below yesterday's low out there that you're looking for. So that's been established. Uh, the 30-minute chart, it's the 41.55 level that a price can close above, says we have a further rally. You've got a bottom, several bottom patterns on the 60-minute time frame chart. So 41.43 is its resistance level. The 120-minute chart, it's going to be the oscillator and change line, which is 41.47 out there. And and that's basically with the five hour chart. The five hour chart is saying about 41.58. So those are all your resistance zones out there. If price does rally, uh, we'll thank Brent to uh, not Brent. Well, we'll thank Brent for asking the question. And then uh, John in the uh, Tiger's Den for alerting us to the fact that at least in the case of the NQ, and this is what I would be doing. I would just simply be looking at the NQ out here is that uh, any significant rally, should you get one, should find resistance at that 200 period exponential moving average. That's currently printing at 13,459. Folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next if you're listening at 9 o'clock or your favorite polar bear if it's 2 p.m. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Take care, folks.